Did you know there are so many prison breaks in Star Wars? I went through and I ranked them all in order from my least favorite to my most favorite, but because there are so many, I've got to get a few disclaimers out of the way. Prison Break, by uh, my definition, is going to be when someone breaks out of or is broken out of an institution of some f sort with guards and some sort of restraint or doors or electrified floors, some means of containing them. That's going to be the qualifier here. So that unfortunately discounts instances in Star Wars where prisoners are brought to another location to be publicly executed by being fed to large monsters for a cheering crowd, but then happen to escape amidst the chaos, get weapons back, and end up killing or presumably killing a bounty hunter with the last name Fett. Those instances are uh, disqualified immediately, and also we are only talking about ones from films, uh, TV shows, animation, things that have been on a screen. I'm sure that there are countless, countless, countless more Star Wars prison breaks from books and comics, uh, but we're not <laughs> talking about those today. So with those qualifiers out of the way, let's start at the bottom of the list with number 18. Rey escaping Starkiller base from Star Wars The Force Awakens, and uh, I wanted this one to be higher up on the list because I love the the finale the, of, uh, of this movie. Hi Bruno. But unfortunately uh, this scene is just not much of a prison break. Uh, Rey manages to get her way out with Jedi mind trick that she figures out how to do and then she meets up with her friends and they walk out of the base and there's the Falcon. They're able to walk away and they make it extremely clear that they could escape but they are choosing to stay behind to help the resistance destroy Starkiller base. So, uh, as much as I enjoy that whole sequence, the escape part is done very quickly. Hi, little baby. Do you want to be let out of this apartment? Is that your prison break? You're okay with staying because uh, the warden gives you pets? Okay. At number 17, we have the rescue of Chewbacca from The Rise of Skywalker. And like the rest of this movie, this scene is so fast, there's no stakes, and it just kind of happens for the sake of happening. It's fun enough, but extremely not memorable. I just watched it a couple days ago and I already don't remember what happened. There was some blaster shots, I'm sure stormtroopers died, uh, and they rescued Chewbacca. Yay! That's, that's about it. At number 16, we have the New Republic prison ship from The Mandalorian Season 1, Episode 6, The Prisoner. Now I'm sure the placement of this one is going to be controversial because uh, The Mandalorian is a great show, but uh, I hate this episode. I cannot stand watching it. Rewatching it, uh, the two times that I did, the first time for showing my girlfriend uh, the Mandalorian series and the second time for making this list, I just found the whole experience unbearable. I know the characters are supposed to be unlikable. I understand that like, it could be, it's a fun concept, this team that like barely gets along, they're all scummy and we're following them throughout the breakout and they're all betraying each other. It's a fun concept, but God, the characters are just so unlikable and so over the top, and the pacing of it is weird. I feel like if this uh, episode or segment were instead shown in an animated uh, cartoon, one, I could believe some of these villain characters a bit more. Uh, I think they would just be more believable in an animated setting as opposed to real people like hissing and flipping their eyes and, and being just the worst. And then also I would have loved for this to be about 20 or so minutes because uh, they really could have picked up the pace on this one. I'm all for building tension, but it does not work for me in this episode. At number 15, we have Breaking Out Gregor from The Bad Batch Season 1, Episode 14, War Mantle. It's a fun sequence with obvious... Bruno, do you have to do this on camera? It's a fun sequence with obvious nods to the Death Star Escape from A New Hope. You know, it's well made. It's not particularly uh, incredible though. It's not bad, it just doesn't stand out either. At number 14, we have Dooku, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Anakin Skywalker being captured by pirates in the Clone Wars Season 1, Episodes 11 through 12, Dooku Captured and Gungan General. Could they possibly have put more snark into these episodes? No. It's a very fun concept watching Obi-Wan and Anakin being forced to work with Count Dooku. I, I spent a good bit of time trying to imagine 
the live action actors doing these scenes. And I actually did like Jar Jar's part of this story, but none of it felt particularly gripping. We know that all three characters are one going to escape. They're not going to spend their lives in pirate prison. They're not going to be killed or anything like that. Uh, and two, we know that there's not going to be any greater understanding that comes to form between Obi-Wan and Anakin and Count Dooku, they're going to remain enemies because that is the way that Star Wars has to play out. It's just an opportunity for antics and jokes, which I enjoy, but it's not going to get it super high up on this list. At number 13, we have the attempted rescue of Jedi Master Luminara from Rebels Season 1, Episode 5, Rise of the Old Masters. This is a good episode that explores the early and budding relationship between Master and Apprentice Kanan and Ezra, as Kanan is struggling with Ezra's Jedi teachings. He gets word that Luminara might still be alive, a uh, respected Jedi Master, so they devise a plan to rescue her so that way uh, he could pass Kane, uh, Ezra's training on to her. This episode's a lot of fun. The Grand Inquisitor's introduction makes an imposing antagonist, but the uh, prison break itself for all the uh, verbal hype that they give this prison goes off ridiculously smoothly. and I understand the first half of it is a trap the Jedi are supposed to get in, but once the trap is sprung, it doesn't really get much more difficult for our heroes. Uh, the Grand Inquisitor, of course, is uh, a challenge, but they managed to get away from him, and then there are a couple stormtroopers between them and freedom, so bit of an underwhelming trap, guys. At number 12, we have the escape from Kadava from Clone Wars Season 2, Episodes 12 through 13. I love seeing these slave-keeping bastards get their comeuppance. It is incredibly satisfying to watch them get killed. The warden taunting Obi-Wan that a Jedi would never kill an unarmed man, then Rex taking his spear, spearing him through the chest and going, I'm no Jedi. Oof. Oh, that felt good to watch. <laughs> At number 11, we have the rescue of Hondo from the very beginning of Rebels Season 3, Episode 1, Step Into Shadows, Part 1. The opening of a great two-part story sees Ezra leading a mission to rescue the pirate Hondo Anaka for some information that he has that can help out the rebellion against the Empire. When things don't go exactly according to plan, Ezra taps into the dark side of the Force to twist to the Jedi mind trick and force the pilot of a walker to shoot his friends and then walk his walker to the edge of a cliff and walk itself off. Ezra makes a man kill himself. That is some dark stuff. So while this segment is very short, it is extremely memorable. It sets up a great arc as Ezra is struggling to face the dark side within himself in a very compelling way. At number 10, we have the escape above Jakku from Star Wars The Force Awakens. When First Order Stormtrooper FN2187 decides to leave, he needs a pilot. And it just so happens that the Resistance's best is being held prisoner on his Star Destroyer. The escape that follows establishes a fun dynamic between Poe Dameron and Finn, who gets his name in the sequence, a fun friendship, a great bromance, and it also does a great job of showing us how great of a pilot that Poe is. It's a short but fun sequence that establishes a lot for these two characters at the beginning of this trilogy. At number 9 we have Asajj Ventress rescuing Newt Gunray from Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 1, Episode 9, Cloak of Darkness. It is fun to see the bad guys being the one having to break someone out for a change, though there never really appeared to be any hitches in their escape plan. Obviously, it's fun to see the heroes on the back foot. The lightsaber battle between Asajj Ventress and Luminara and Ahsoka is a lot of fun, but for the dark side, being the ones executing the prison break, the plan going off without a hitch uh, makes it not as great a prison escape, though it is fun to see our heroes be humbled a little bit. At number eight, we have the Bad Batch first fleeing Kamino in the Bad Batch Season 1, Episode 1, Aftermath. When the augmented clones of Squad 99, aka the Bad Batch, don't fall in line with the Empire, they are arrested upon their return to the clone homeworld of Kamino. Inside the prison cell, they meet up with other augmented clone child, Omega, and then they have to use their differences from the regular clones, the regs, to their advantage to break out. There's a good bit of tension when Omega is the one to set them free. And then it also leads up to the climax of the episode where the Bad Batch faces off against Crosshair for the first time. It's heartbreaking to see these brothers turn against each other. It's a fun, well-shot sequence. Uh, the cinematography and everything is dramatic. 
the animation is gorgeous, so it's a great start. To, it's a great finale to the start of this series. At number seven, we have The Fortress Inquisitorious from Kenobi Part 4. This episode serves as the point in the series where Obi-Wan gets back into the groove of being a Jedi, as he and Tala attempt to free young Princess Leia from the third sister in the midst of the Inquisitor's fortress, he must quickly regain his connection to the Force in order to protect Leia. It's cool to see Ben go on a mission like he would have done in the old days, like during Clone Wars, and I dig some of the shots and moments in the escape. It just wasn't as epic as some of the other jailbreak sequences on this list. It's hard not to think that if this had a higher budget or if it was animated that there should have been a lightsaber battle between Obi-Wan and the third sister, how cool that would have been, how much I wanted to see it, and I just think that it's a missed opportunity for the climax of this escape. At number six we have the rescue of Kanan from the Rebels season one finale, Fire Across the Galaxy. A fast-paced rescue done right, with a plan that goes awry, an epic lightsaber battle, TIE fighter action, and surprise help that makes sense and adds to the series' overall narrative. This is a season finale done right. At number five, we have Saving Baby Yoda from the season two finale of The Mandalorian, Rescue. Speaking of season finales, the rescue of Grogu is just awesome from start to finish. Every character, hero and villain, gets a moment to shine, and Moff Gideon and the Dark Troopers are imposing threats to our heroes. And of course, the last minute rescue from Luke Skywalker pays off Grogu contacting a Jedi from earlier in the season, and it's just such a kick-ass sequence. I mean, this is a lot of fun to watch. At number four, we have the Battle Above Coruscant from The Revenge of the Sith. I was really considering whether this actually fit on the list or not, because it's not exactly a prison break that's happening, but god damn it, the sequence is just so fun, and it does technically fit the qualifiers that I gave of there's a prisoner, he's in an enemy installation, a battleship, and uh, he is rescued from armed guards. But as much as I love this sequence, it's a pretty shitty plan, not gonna lie. So we have the most important elected official in the government being taken onto an enemy ship that we know belongs to a notorious Jedi killer. What's the plan? Oh, let's send two Jedi onto this ship with no backup aside from one astromech two, one that got destroyed technically, so two astromechs, and uh, let them just go nuts and hope that they happen to rescue the Chancellor in the middle of a massive space battle on an enemy ship with General Grievous and Count Dooku on it. Yeah, no problem at all. It is com a complete miracle that they actually pulled this off. All right, before we get into the top three, I just need to say that I love, love, love all three of these so much, and I easily think any of them could be considered the best jailbreak in all of Star Wars. They're all slightly different in what they deliver. I love them all, and it really could just be a matter of what order I happen to watch these in being how I placed them. Uh, they're so good, I could flip this top three any time. Uh, if you think, oh, that any of one of these you like better than the other, no judgment here. Uh, they're all incredible, but I have to put them in an order. So, coming in at number three, we have the Escape from the Death Star from Star Wars A New Hope. And speaking of chaotic, no plan escapes. The trio coming together in this sequence is so fun to watch. Their dynamics, fun, chaotic. It really sets up the original trilogy to be as successful as it was. This really has it all with ridiculous blaster fights, diving headfirst into a trash compactor, a random trash tentacle monster, C-3PO thinking that he killed them all accidentally, Solo charging into a squad of troopers, the Wilhelm scream, just close the blast doors, open the blast doors, open the blast doors. The energy of this sequence is just so goddamn fun. It's just a joy to watch. Coming in at number two, we have One Way Out from Star Wars Andor Season 1, Episodes 8 through 10. The buildup of the tension, the brutality shown of the prison, the empire, fascism in general, was so spectacularly done that seeing Cassian grow into a team player and a leader was so goddamn satisfying. Andy Serkis' character was in incredible. One of the best performances that he's ever given, and that's saying a lot. Andy Serkis is a great actor. 
actor. It's very different than anything else on this list, or indeed anything else in all of Star Wars, because of how realistic it feels. Between all of the blasters and the electrified floors and the Empire and all of that, it's just so gritty, and every death of a prisoner just hits. Like, it's heartbreaking to see them not being able to make it to freedom, but it makes every step of victory along the way so much more satisfying. And then, of course, the uh, final scene with Andy Serkis' character is just so heartbreaking. But coming in at number one, what I am right now considering the best prison break in all of Star Wars is the Citadel arc from Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 3, Episodes 18 to 20. This three-episode arc is incredible. Fun situations, some surprisingly brutal kills. Everything that can go wrong does in a very satisfying way. This is a tightly packed script, but they pull everything off super well, and it's all really fun to watch. We have a fun villain in the Warden of the Citadel, some fun interactions and character moments with Ahsoka, Anakin, and Captain Tarkin. I love the use of the three reprogrammed battle droids that take orders from R2-D2. Just a really cool thing for a nerd like myself to watch, and also a real clever way uh, to navigate this situation. For its fun, for its drama, for its stakes, for the deaths that happen along the way, not everybody makes it out. This is the best prison break in all of Star Wars. Whew! That was a long list. Uh, certainly longer than I thought it would be. They've done so many prison breaks in Star Wars, and I suppose it's possible that I missed some in the many seasons of The Clone Wars, in Rebels, in Bad Batch, It's possible and Resistance, which I've never actually watched. It's possible that I've missed one or two. Uh, if I did, feel free to yell at me in the comments below. Let me know what you think of prison breaks in Star Wars, uh, and especially in Andor. If you're not watching Andor, by the way, you are missing out on some of the best Star Wars that has ever been produced. That's all that I have for now, and gosh, it was long. That is a, such a long video. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this or much shorter ones in the future. Have a great week.